Good morning. Praise God. We're excited today. We're running a little behind, but that's okay. We're thanking and praising God for 35 years for our pastor and his daughter.
May the Lord have a blessing to the reader, the hearer, most of all, the doer of his word. Amen. It's another day that God has blessed us. Yes. Oh, that's right. Another day that we desire to give thanks. We have more than ever to thank God for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are woken one more day. Yes. He blessed us with a pastor for 35 years ago. Amen. Way before most of us really got started. And he's still standing now. Thank you, Jesus. So, God, we come this morning to thank you for everything that you do, God, but we thank you for our pastor. We don't take it for granted, God, that he's been on the wall for 35 years. Come so, on now, come on. To watch over, to look at his sheep. God, we come with an open heart. We know we're here to praise your holy name, God. But you allow us to give just a little bit of your glory to him for a minute. Not in the fact of glory, but in honor, God. We just want to honor him this morning during this time. God, we give you all we have. God, we thank you for all you give. God, we, we praise your holy name for all that you are. God, we just continue to look to the hills from with come if I help. Knowing that our help comes from you, Lord. We can't do nothing without you, God. We ask you to continue to bless us. Continue to watch over us. We're just a little church down in the corner, God, but we come to serve and to praise your holy name. God, we don't take it for granted that the lights are on, the doors are open. God, we don't take it for granted for all the things that you allowed to have. No, that's right. So God, we ask you to go with us today during this celebration time, God. You've already blessed us with the rain being held off, God. We, we thank you for all that you do, God. We just thank you. Thank you we can't thank you enough, God. No, we can't. This is a great day in our lives, God. We Continue to praise your holy name. Yes, yes. So God, we ask you to go with us, stand by us, watch over us, bless the man of God that's going to bring the word of God. Touch him, touch Fill him up, God, that he be able to acknowledge all that you gave him to give us, God. Go with him, God, as he preaches the word of God. God, stand with us, God, as we go forward. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Grateful to be a part of it. 
Pastor, we want you to know that we don't just want to do lip service to say we love you. We want to show it in kindness and the things that we do. Yeah. To you and Sister Oliver, because you definitely have sown the seeds. I can speak for myself in our life, and I'm grateful for that. Mm -hmm. I don't take any of it lightly, and I don't take any of it for granted. I'm grateful for the new Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. I'm grateful for our pastor yes, yes. and his wife. His entire family. I'm grateful. Likewise. Amen. 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 We're all grateful. We're all very, very grateful. And now not to prolong, we're going to have a solo by our own Sister Mary Plant, Deacon X, Mary Plant. Oh, the pastor's coming up before. Okay. And I'm going to leave. We're going to, after the solo, our pastor is coming. Amen. And we'll hear from him in his way. Amen. There's none other like the Reverend Dr. Vincent P. Oliver. Okay. He's coming in. Sometimes you just have to be disrespected. You'll survive. Yes. 
you'll be all right. And, and, if, and if you carry yourself respectfully, maybe not that person, but others will respect you. We've got to figure out a way for our young men to stop uh, ending lives and then destroying their own lives with acts that really don't amount to a whole lot uh, when you think about uh, the whys and, and the how comes. So I'm saying uh, from this pulpit, and I hope it goes from other pulpits of pastors, uh, that we would ask our young men, uh, put your guns down. Young ladies, put your guns down. Stop, stop resolving your, your differences uh, in violent uh, and ungodly fashions. And I believe if we all pray that prayer and, and say those words repeatedly, somebody will hear us. And it may make the difference. So I want to say that. Again, I'm grateful for uh, New Calvary and what you're doing for uh, the first family, Sister Oliver and I. Uh, we celebrate this anniversary together. Amen. I mean, she was right there. Amen. Uh, I took the du direct blows, but she was right there to patch me up, <laughs> pick me back up, dust me off, and send me on my way. So Amen. I thank God uh, that the Lord has blessed me with a wife. Uh, who is ever by my son. Amen. Look him out for me. Amen. And then, and then not only that for me, but she does it for the church. She is she is an invaluable asset yes, to this yes. church, yes, and the women of this church, to the young adults and the children Woo! of this church. Anybody who has felt the love of uh, Sister Oliver, she don't like that lady stuff. Okay, first lady, that, that's a dog, okay? Uh, if anybody who has felt her love, she put a little piece of money in your pocket. <laughs> if, if, if she gave you some money at any time during your growing up here, or if you just being a member, say amen. 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 If we could get all that money back, I'd retire and we move to Hawaii. So. <laughs> She's a giver. She loves to give. And I thank God for that. And when you give back to her, you bless the two of us. So I'll say more. I think y'all gonna give me some time to say something later on? Okay. That was my little plea. <laughs> to say that. We we uh we have not only been blessed with um Brother Angelo Cressy, who who just Boy, you fixed it for me. That's right. You fixed that thing for me. Grew up right here. Yeah. Amen. Learning, learning to follow the lead of God and, and discover your purpose. Uh, you blessed me. You ministered to me when you talked about finding your purpose. That's our that's our assignment in life and in ministry. Thank God for that. But we have another a son of the church. Amen. Amen. A preacher. Par excellence. Amen. And I'm glad to say I had a little something to do with that. Amen. Praise God. Praise right. the Lord. And hopefully you'll hear some of me in here. It'll be the good part. <laughs> We have we are blessed and honored to have our, as our guest preacher my son in the ministry, uh, just like my son uh, biologically, uh, even though he's not, he's just like it. Uh, but he is a man of God. Uh, he is currently serving as the youth pastor at the Greater Zion Missionary Baptist Church in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Amen. So distinction and making a difference in ministry. So I'm glad he could still away and, and bless his pastor today. I'm still the pastor. <laughs> what Tegan? Tegan? Why? I'm the pastor. <laughs> say it. Say it, Tegan. <laughs> you the pastor. <laughs> We have we got a little understanding. She know where to, I came from. I don't know where she is, but she may be watching, and I want her to know. Amen. I'm the pastor. <laughs> okay, where you go? Praise God. 
I'm speaking of none other than Reverend Trey DuPont. Amen. He's coming in. He's going to preach a mighty word, and he's going to minister to all of us. I'll take some of the ministry, and y'all enjoy the rest of it. But before that happens, we have a soloist, Amen. one of my other favorites. She's going to come. She's going to bless us. Yes. I've been missing her singing and ministering. Amen. None other than Sister Mary Plant. She's going to come Amen. and minister to us. And then after that, the preacher's going to bless us with the word of God. Everybody be encouraged.
desire to serve you, let this minister to their hearts. Someone who has yet to get to know you, may you provide your spirit to them today. It's in the miracle working name of our Messiah. We pray these things. Amen. 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 I may not have any quantitative words of wisdom to provide for you, Pastor, <laughs> for the role that you have ahead, given as though I am miles behind you. Uh, I do pray that the word of God offers some kind of comfort, encouragement, and inspiration, if you will, for the journey that lies ahead. And as I said in my prayer, I pray that those of us who eavesdrop on this conversation I'm having with you are made better because of that conversation. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you will, uh, for a moment, indulge me to go back to 2003. Uh, 2003, there was a game released, and that game would change gamers and game men for uh, history. Amen? And in that, the, the gamer would begin by a, a title that would engulf every gamer there is. I'm, I'm going to ask for just any other mic, uh, and we'll be good. Uh, so this, this gaming would, would be able to, to addict people, and, and they would be uh, held to that responsibility because of a call to duty. And so for a moment, I want to talk about a game that would change gaming, a game that would addict people. It, it was a game that merged the risk that we like to take alongside of the opportunity to grow in maturity. It, it is a game called Call of Duty. And, and I want to know, Pastor, after 35 years, what is it that has allowed you to remain in ministry? What is it that has allowed you to not throw in the towel? What is it that has allowed you to stand firm in the faith? And I don't understand when so many people go through life situations, we are so eager to throw in the towel. But if we understand that we have a God that can sustain us, then we will remember to always be kept. But I want to know, as I asked Paul this question in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, why is it that you didn't give up? Why, why is it that you didn't walk away? Away. Why? Why is it while deacons were arguing and trustees were confused and folks walked away and people got angry and people got upset that you remained on your course? I, I want to know because ministry can be hard. Ministry can be perplexing. Ministry can be difficult. Ministry can cause you to struggle and yet you remain faithful to the yeah, call. Yeah. And I asked Paul, Paul said it is because of the ministry that has been given to me and the mercies that have been given to me that I do not faint. I love it that, that when I read Paul, Paul said that there's a reason. Here's the entire sermon in a snapshot. I can't faint because God equipped me to do the job that he called me to do. And my ministry is not finished until my assignment has been complete. I celebrate you today, Pastor. Amen. For realizing that your ministry has not been completed yet and, and for staying the course all of my life, you stayed on the south side of Wilmington with a burden for people in ministry and you've gone outside of these walls to bless and to minister ministers and pastors and preacher all over this country. So what is it, Pastor? I, I don't need to ask you. I want to presume that you would say the same thing Paul said. It's the ministry yeah. Yeah. that is inside of me that has, has caused me not to faint. If we're honest, we all go through seasons of, of life, seasons of employment, seasons of parenthood, seasons of marriage, seasons
seasons of church and seasons of relationship where we just can't do it anymore. We, we lose hope. We lose faith. We lose consciousness. We, we lose the desire to want to stay where we are. But for some strange reason, Pastor, you stayed on the battlefield and you stayed fighting for the Lord. I want to believe that Sister Oliver was somewhere reminding you that there's a charge to keep you have and a God to glorify. And I want to know when you came to New Calvary and you took the, took the smoking, you put the smoking signs up in the kitchen and yet you stayed. You've seen people fight and yet you stayed. And I want to believe, Pastor, that the reason why you did is because you understood the weight of your assignment. Uh, See, a misunderstanding of assignment and purpose and season will cause you to abort a mission prematurely yeah, yeah. and have you operating outside of the will of God where yeah. you are not protected by his protection. But what you opted to do was stay securely under the hand of God so that he could orchestrate, orchestrate your steps. Yeah. Here, I have yeah. a few reasons why Paul decided to stay in ministry. See, Pastor Light Paul you dealt with some of those same issues. Folks had some things to say about you. And they weren't always kind things. Folks had some type of way they were feeling about your ability to stand and preach the unadulterated word and, and how you weren't moving the way other people were moving because your priority was to preach the gospel simple, pure, and Free. And here, the first reason Paul says I can't give up is because he has a responsibility to declare the word with integrity. It's right here in the text. I didn't make it up. Read verses 2 and 4. It says, but have reconciled, renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. I want to pause right there and say that's the reason I believe that you did not quit, because you had to make sure that you faithfully declared the gospel. You had to make sure that you did it without any, in any decorative language, that you did it pure and simple from the spirit of God with integrity, expositorily gave what the word has said so that we could grow and mature by way of the word and not of you. This season of preachers and pastors we lean a whole lot on personality but I praise God for you like Paul that declared I'm just here as a herald of the gospel and the herald doesn't get the opportunity to preach his own message but a herald of the king only has to declare what thus saith the Lord. I got a responsibility. I got a, I got a responsibility to make sure that I complete my assignment so I cannot quit because it's been given to me a ministry that I don't deserve. It's been given to me a ministry that I have not earned. It's been given to me a ministry that God has equipped me to do what he called me to do. I have to declare the word of truth with integrity. It is a call to do. Do you know why? it's easy for some to walk away from marriage, for some to walk away from church, for some to walk away from people is they don't honor the call to stick to the duty. Sometimes it feels like you know what? The call isn't worth the struggle. The call isn't worth the fight. The call isn't worth the argument. The call isn't worth the stress. And yet they abort the mission because it seems hard. But I'm so glad Paul declared that I've got to make sure I stick to the call of duty. Not only yeah, yeah, is it a responsibility of Paul's and yeah. the responsibility of pastors to declare the word with integrity for the people who are watching that say, but I'm not a preacher and, and I'm not a pastor. I don't have to do it no, because when you accepted Christ, you were given the ministry as well, and that ministry is of reconciliation, yeah. and you too have a responsibility to rightly Divide the word of truth. Yeah. My God. 
Not only is it a responsibility to declare the word with integrity, but it is also the responsibility to release the light of Christ. Yeah. Pastor, I love it that when we stand in this place and we preach to God's people, we don't preach us, but we preach him. And if you read in verses 5 and 6, it says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. For we preach not ourselves. Come on, can we get that? Uh -huh. We don't preach what we want to preach. Uh -huh. We don't preach what we feel like preaching. Uh -huh. We don't preach what will make us look good. Uh -huh. We don't preach what will make us look smarter than we actually are. But we stand flat-footed on the Word of God and preach the God. We don't have the authority to change the word because culture has changed. We don't have the authority to change the word because climate has changed. But we've got to preach the word of God so that the light in us might shine. Come on, read verse 6. It says, For well, God, who commended the light to shine out of darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light to of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Here is so important. Paul, Paul, as he was saw on the road of Damascus, he, he saw a bright light and, and, and he was blinded by the light. This is this is this is so powerful because he's speaking of his own personal experience as it relates to what God did through him and for everybody else. Paul says that when you have been given the light as he was on the road of Damascus, you can't return to the way you were, but you will remain forever changed. You know what the problem is as it relates to light shining, because we want to make sure that we are adorned properly. We want to make sure that we are respected well in our communities. We want to make sure that we get the title and we get the prestige. But pastor, what you showed me by example is it doesn't matter how many degrees you have. It doesn't matter how tall you stand. It doesn't matter how sharp the sooner or how beautiful the hat but can the light of Christ shine out of your life when God calls your name and you stand before God will he be able to declare well done thy good and faithful servant can you say today that this little light of God I will let it shine everywhere I went I let it shine he says the light has been given into me if I gave up to darkness, the darkness has the authority to take my life. If I gave in to the circumstances and bowed my head in shame, then I allowed shame to take away the light. But you got to understand that the God of light that graced you with salvation and graced you with the glory and anointed you for a purpose and called you into ministry is not allowing anything to rise up against you that will dim the light of God. Yeah, so yeah. we can't hand over things to the enemy. I know that's right. Mm -hmm. But we have to make sure that our light yes, is shown yes, mm -hmm. in community, in church. And here's the kicker, in your families. That's right. Right. So we do well at church uh -huh. sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we don't always do well with our families. Uh -huh. Come on, come on I don't care how close you are or how down to earth you may be. You can't negate your responsibility to let your light shine. There ought to be something different about you on the job. There ought to be something different about you on the couch watching TV. There ought to be something different about you at the family reunion. You ought to be able to play spades, but you ain't got to drink, curse, and cuss everybody else. That's right. That's right. He says, he says, I can't, I can't faint. Because of the ministry that has been assigned to me. And it was given to me out of mercy. Which means everything that I need to carry out the ministry he entrusted is already in me. 
I have to make sure that I carry the responsibility to declare the word of truth uh, and do it with integrity. I have the responsibility to release the light of Christ so that others would see Christ. Not me, but they would see the light that I give off. And you're asking me, Lord, well, well how, how, how do you know that it's your responsibility to show the light of Christ? I'm so glad you asked. It says in verse 7, 8, and 9, it says, but we have this treasure in earth vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You're not reading. I'll keep going. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Here it is. But we have this treasure. Uh -huh. And you know, when you do a word study, I want to know what is this treasure that they're talking about, Minister uh, Wilson. I, I want to know what is this treasure that Paul speaks about that is in earthen vessels. And, and when I did some word study, I found out that the treasure is the ministry. But then it led me to the question, well, what is the ministry that Paul spoke about in verse 1? And it is yet sticking as Adelie. It is the gospel and the good news of Christ. Uh, Paul said, I I can't give up because I have to shine the light because the gospel was good enough to save me. It's got to be good enough to save you and I've got to preach it until I can't preach it no more. I've got to declare it until nothing else comes out. i got to continue to lift up the name of Jesus. And not only is it because I've got a responsibility uh, to declare the word with integrity and to release the, the light of Christ in my communities. But, but I've got a responsibility to rely on God's keeping power. You yeah, better see right. it right there. Persecuted but not forsaken. Cast down but not destroyed. You gotta see it always being about the body. I'm troubled. Pressure on every side. I need you to know that we have a call to keep on keeping on but not because you look so pretty. Not because you stand so strong. Not because you live so much. But because my God is able to keep us. If you want to be careful, and if you don't want to be careful, all of God's people are kept by the hand of God. You got to be able to brag not only on you, but brag on God. You know what's amazing about earthen vessels, these clays of jar, Bishop, is, is, that, is that they're not pretty on the outside. Some are broken more than you would want them to be. And they, 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 don't, they don't look as valuable as you might want them to appear. All right, all right. And I'm so grateful that Paul, in his great ministry, referred to himself as an earthen vessel. Earthen yeah. vessel being fragile. Earthen vessel being of low value, worth cents on the dollar. It costs you nothing in your body, but what adds value to that low vessel is the contents that that vessel holds. And many of us uh, spend so much time uh, trying to accredit our own selves uh, as expensive vessels uh, and to be greater and bigger than we truly are. Paul took this opportunity to abase himself and say, I'm absolutely nothing, but thanks be unto God that what is inside of me is everything. So even though I started like nothing, God has made me more than I could ever be without him. That's why Paul can't quit, because he knows that if he abides in Christ, he can do all things. But if he doesn't abide in Christ, there will be no fruit. We want to put joy jars. We, we want to paint with custom paint. We want to dress up our jars. But if we spend too much time patrolling and dressing up and painting and wrapping our jars, then the light of Christ will never be able to shine. I'm broken. But God said, I need your brokenness. I'm ugly. But God says, I can use you as a resource. I'm not valuable, but God says I can keep you. Yes, yes. A word of caution that I've observed in my pastor's 35 years of ministry is that he realized that while he's a vessel keeping the content of light, he can't boast right. in his ability to keep the content of light. 
Because the truth is, he's not keeping the content as the job. Nope. But what he is containing is keeping him. See, we, we make sense of things in, in our understanding, but when we see things in kingdom, right. it doesn't always make sense. And so what Paul is trying to get us to understand is that you can get off of your high horse yeah. because you don't have the capability to keep the power of God contained. Right. But when you realize that the only thing that is keeping you together is the fact that God has placed him inside, inside of you. That's why when we read, read persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, and when we read troubled on every side and yet not distressed, perplexed but not in despair, it is Paul saying what was and what was not. It's an acknowledgement that I could have been forsaken, but I wasn't. I could have been destroyed, but I wasn't. I could have been uh, uh, distressed, but I wasn't. I could have been in despair, but I wasn't. It's a challenge for all of us uh -huh. to see our lives in proper perspective. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, the gospel is the reason why Paul was perplexed. But the gospel was also the reason why Paul was not forsaken. All right. mm -hmm. It was the gospel that allowed him to walk in uh, uh, perplexity. And, and it was the gospel that allowed him not to be despaired. It was that same gospel that allowed him to feel persecuted and was persecuted. But it was that same gospel to make sure that he was never forsaken. It's that gospel that made him feel like he was cast down. And he was cast down. But it was the gospel that made sure that he wasn't utterly destroyed. So sometimes you've got to hold on to God like Isaiah said or Job said. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Because even even though God is cutting at me, I realize that it's only going to make me stronger and greater, and I have to defer to God because there's a ministry inside of me. Paul said, the reason why I don't grow faint, the reason why I don't give up is I have to declare the word with integrity. I have to release the light of Christ, and I have to rely on God's keeping power. And I've got two things I'm going to throw at you really quickly, and we can all go home. I've got to recruit others to strengthen their relationship with Christ. Yes, it's your responsibility as the people of God. Yes, it has become pastor's responsibility not to just win souls but to equip souls for the work of the ministry. And in order for them to be equipped for the work of the ministry, they've got to grow stronger in their faith. And this is what Paul is letting us know. He says this is for your sake. I don't have time to read it all but he says always prayer about the body and dying of the Lord in verse 10 and it moves on and verse 12 says so then death worketh in us but life worketh in you. Pastor I'm so grateful Come on, sir. that 35 years of struggling 35 years of death operating in you 35 years of your family sacrificing is the mere reason I'm here. It is for that purpose I'm alive. It is that reason, that struggle, that sacrifice, that death, that burden, that joy that was beset before you that I can stand without a shadow of doubt and say, I know my Redeemer lives. It is because of that sacrifice. So don't be constrained when you have to go through those hard times. You may never see the reward on this side, but you've got a responsibility to make sure that we are stronger having had exposed to who you are yeah. in the ministry inside yeah. of you than we ever were before you. There are people that walked away from the church, but they always know that they can come back home because you offer the light of Christ and you want to give God glory and not yourself because the goal is and always was to lead people yeah. to Christ. You have a responsibility to carry out the word with integrity. That's why you can't quit. You've got responsibility to share forth the light of Christ. Responsibility to rely on God's keeping power. Responsibility to recruit others. But you've got responsibility to rest your eyes on the eternal. It's right here. I'm done. You preach. Amen.
It says, for our light affliction, verse 17, <laughs> which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which, uh, which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen uh, are eternal. Pastor, you got the responsibility. New Calvary, you have the responsibility to rest your eyes on Jesus Christ, uh, the God of our eternal security. We don't have time to worry about the pitfalls, about the pit stops, about the distractions, about the things that get in our way, but we've got to stay focused, we've got to stay committed, we have to stay faithful to the call of God. Pastor, don't give up, don't give in, you are doing a work that has blessed all of our lives. Sister Oliver, you also have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Don't give up. There is but work to be done. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul said, I can't. I can't quit because, because I, I've got a call to do it. And he proved it by explaining what his responsibilities were. But here is the amazing part. It's not the one-off things of these responsibilities that cause him not to bend. His attachment is to the ministry yeah. by which he was saved. Yeah, that's right. yeah. And in response to what God has done for him, mm. he can't grow weary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's because of what Christ did on the cross yeah. that he can't give up. Mm -hmm. Pastor, thank you for the years Amen. of service that you've yeah. done here yeah. at this church Amen. and abroad. People of God, you got to know that you too can't give up. Amen. I don't know where we are in our relationship with the Lord, but we have to know that God can keep us. Yes, he can. We have to know that God can equip us. Yes, we sir. have to rely yes, on God's keeping power. Be not dismayed, whatever be ties. God will take care of you. Yes, Beneath his wings of love will abide. God will take care of you. Don't you give up. You didn't give up when you were a little boy in Detroit. Somehow you went from an altar boy at a Catholic church to a pastor of a Baptist church. But you didn't give up. You had some folk look you in your face and tell you they couldn't stay here any longer. But you didn't give up then, and you can't give up now, because you always led by example that ministry continues. And you said it multiple times that I am not the big all of end alls, that this is God's church, and this is his ministry. And forgive me if you're offended by the phrase, but one monkey don't stop no show. But you kept on going, and you kept on fighting. So I said, fight on, Pastor. Keep fighting. Even though this pandemic took a whole lot out of you, keep on fighting because you're making a difference. Keep on serving because you are making a difference. Keep on trusting because God is being glorified in you. My God. My God. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Will and doing well. Paul says, I can't give up. Declare the word with integrity wherever you are. I knew that's right. Release the light of Christ wherever you are. Rely on God's keeping power, not your own, wherever you are. Yes, sir. Recruit others to strengthen their relationship with God wherever you are. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rest your eyes on the eternal wherever you are there's a there's a story of a man whose younger brother you may stand his younger brother was afraid of open doors one day he said you know what I'm going to do for the Daniel Minister Wilson I'm, I'm going to I'm going to lock you in a room 
full of open doors. Mm -hmm. Mm. You think about it, the irony of the situation is you can't lock me in a room with an open door. But here's the truth, Pastor, you've been here 35 years, mm -hmm. locked in a room with an open door. That's right. Not because you couldn't leave, not because you weren't free to leave, my, my, my. but because you were under the call to serve as a Dude, soldier that's right. honors his call to do. Yes, and he so is. So for that, Pastor, for being willing to stand when others left, for being willing to love when others hated, for being willing to be mild and to lessen yourself so that others can fancy themselves. Jesus. You've been locked here with an open door. Paul describes it as being a bond servant. Mm. Same term as a slave. Right. You got freedom to leave, but you chose stay. to stay. And so for 35 years of faithful mm. ministry, Thank you. you've been willing to be a bond servant to the Lord. God bless you. I don't know if I'm doing the altar call if there's anyone in here you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to invite you today. Maybe you're watching online and, and something was said, at least I pray that it was that encouraged you to keep fighting. Maybe you didn't know Jesus. Maybe, maybe you, you, you heard about him but you haven't accepted him into your life. This is the moment Type in that chat field that you want to give your life to Christ today. Ch type in that field that you want to rededicate yourself to the Lord. Wherever you are on your journey, don't be ashamed to get closer with God. Let somebody know in this chat so that we can hold you accountable as a church family, virtually and electronically, so that we can pray for you, that we can encourage you. And finally, to the one out there or the one in here that you just knew it was time for you to throw in that white flag. But today you're encouraged and reminded you can't give up. <laughs> Not that you can't, but you can't. <laughs> because God has been too good for you. That's right. That's but right. Keep on blessing you. If you know that you don't have the ability to keep yourself, but for however you've been kept, you've been kept by God. Will you take a moment to write in that chat? Will you take a moment for us to rejoice with you? If you don't mind, I'll close in a prayer and then we'll give it to Pastor Oliver. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we in the name of Spirit. Jesus. God, we pray that your spirit will fill this sanctuary, fill the homes, fill the cars of your people. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit will rush the hearts of your people in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for being alive today. We thank you for being above ground today. We thank you for the lives we lost and the experiences we've had over these 35 years. We thank you for our pastor right now in his wife, God. We thank you for their diligence and leadership, God. We thank you for blessing Blessing them and restoring them and replenishing them and holding up their arms, God, that they might continue to do the work that you've assigned touch unto them. their hands, God. We thank you, Lord, for having an opportunity to be witnesses of your ministry. God, we thank you because we know that the gospel is good enough for us and the gospel is good enough for somebody else. So, Lord, let us live by your word. Let us live by your truth. Let us live by your clarity. Let us live by your strength. Let us live by understanding who you are, God. It is in your name, God, that somebody's given their life to Christ. It's in your name, God, that somebody's rededicating their life. It is in Jesus' name, God. We thank you for blessing them and keeping them for another year, God. We thank you, Lord, for this church standing through a pandemic. God, we pray. That you get the glory in our lives. Oh, that's right. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
we ever honor God today after hearing the word preached with such power and precision and then with regard to my wife and I with specificity and he worked it on our behalf declaring the word releasing the light Resting your eyes on the Lord. And then he said, we have to recruit. We have to rely on God. I got him out of order, but I got him. What a great expository message. Yeah. So brilliantly prepared and so expertly delivered. Amen. Y'all give this preaching. Thank you. Thank you, son. That was what a treat. That was a treat. Anybody who has been in this young man's life and watched his ministry you recognize the growth and maturity that was a grown preacher, sir. But we thank God for the message, the messenger, yes, the efforts of the church. I'm counting, y'all, we over the limit, but I understand. Some of y'all snuck in here. Thought I didn't notice. This not, and we got our we got our, our mothers here. They are watching Amen. and keeping their eye on me. You know, I had some mothers, they would say, I'm not leaving because I got to keep my eye on that boy. <laughs> Thank God for our mothers. And I hope they see that we have them yes. present in that particular fashion. Can I say that? Do um, you want to talk first or you want me to? I'm going to talk first. Okay, you just doing a good job. <laughs> but I thank you, New Calvary, for all that you have done to celebrate Reverend Oliver's anniversary. Our anniversary. So I thank you for all that you do. I think that New Calvary is going closer together. We're growing in the Lord. And that's a good thing. Yes, it is. So God is good. Yes, Lord. All the time. And the Calvary has been obedient and didn't come out to church. <laughs> so <until> today. <laughs> but that's, we know why. Because they wanted to hear Reverend Trey. Amen. So God is good. And we thank you for all that you, what we go through during the years, how you stuck by us. It's been a long time when I thought about it. 35 years? 35. Half of my life. <laughs> yes. Half of my life has been here at the New Calvary Baptist Church. But it has not been in vain. When I see my sister back there, Minister Zena Pressy, who was scared to stand up and even say a word, is now preaching a powerful message. I thank God. When I meet, we look back and watch all the, and uh, also, Angelo and Daniel, God has blessed them too to stand up and preach a powerful word. And it was because Reverend Oliver recognized in them and they could come to him and talk to him and he allowed them to take their place and that's a good thing so we have a lot to be thankful for God has been good and we thank you for coming to help us celebrate this morning I can't believe 35 years. 35. I know, the <laughs> I cannot believe 35 years. 
for God is good. Yes, he is. And you know what? When I think about it, it's a good thing that I can't remember we've been here 35 years. Because that means we have had fun being here. So the time doesn't matter. So continue to let us serve God and be ourselves. Amen. Thank you for all you've done for Pastor Oliver for his anniversary. And thank you, deacons and ministers, for helping him keep New Calvary to what it is by preaching the word of God and the deacons by helping him operate the church. Amen. So God is good. And we thank you. Thank you. We love you. Amen. Y'all like how she's going to give everybody some money on the way out there. <laughs> New Calvary, again, thank you. Thank you. For, you know, when I stop and thank God for ministry, I, I thank him for allowing me to survive all the mistakes that I made. You know, you can't stand up here and, and receive honor and accolades and act like you didn't, you know, fall down and bust your head a couple of times <laughs> and make some blunders along the way. So the fact is God is faithful to allow me to survive them. I'm, I hope I'm, I'm speaking to young ministers and young pastors you are not perfect. Amen. And you are going to mess up. But don't mess up for the wrong reasons. If you mess up, let it be because you are trying to get it together. And you just didn't have the proper perspective or training or support systems. And God will allow you to survive those mistakes. I'm a survivor. Well, of my own stuff. Okay. But moving forward, you tell me the one thing that I appreciate is that you didn't put me in a pastor's box and expect me to be a certain kind of pastor or a certain kind of church. You allowed me to be who I am. And you know who did it the most is my young members. I really miss my youth ministry young adults and my little ones. I miss them because I could cut up with them and they would allow me to be the pastor when it was time for me to straighten up and get serious again. Thank you, Lord. So I say this almost prophetically moving forward. You're going to have to have that same support system for your pastor. Because as I move forward from this 35th pastoral anniversary, I am not going to be like other pastors. Wow. That's not a threat. That's me recognizing what God is doing in this ministry and in this man of God. Amen. I cannot be a cookie cut pastor that fits in a certain mold. I need a congregation that will accept me Amen. for who I am and what God is leading me to do. I am no longer aspiring to be anything other than better in the Lord. Amen. There was a time I was aspiring to be a good preacher and a good pastor, aspiring to be a leader and then be respected among other pastors and all of that's behind me. Mm -hmm. that's right. I have no other aspirations other than being a better me. Yeah, that's right. And that's going to take me out of the 35-year box that I've been in. Thank you, Lord. Release me. Amen. Allow me Jesus. to be who I am. Amen. In the Lord. Yes, you got and it. I guarantee you. You got it. We'll be a better congregation if you allow me to let God make me a better pastor. Yes, sir. Yes. That's my little anniversary speech. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fighting back tears when I look at Angelo and Daniel and Zena and Trey. I 
I'm fighting back tears, when I think about all of the people who have gone before them, I heard Ernest Pressey stand up here and sing in the person of Angelo Pressey. And I was fighting those tears. I fight back tears when I think about our co our two co-chairs, uh, Deacon Adderley and, and Deacon Gary Wilson. I just thank God that he has this church on the path that we're on right now. Thank you, Lord. New blood coming into the leadership ranks. And, and you know what? They are being allowed to be who they are as new leaders. Amen. So I thank God for you. I celebrate your individuality. You. Never try to do it like somebody else did it. And never fall for the old, that's the way we always did. That's not going to happen. There has been a paradigm shift in this church. And this is the year of restoration. That's right. Yeah. 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 If y'all was from Detroit, y'all can do a, a smooth That's right. shift. That's right. That's right. It is a shift. Right. Don't y'all, I'm going to be me. Yeah. Me might get me put out, but I'm going to be me. We better have a benediction before something else happens that I can't get out of. <laughs> we got a preacher. Amen. He has blessed our hearts. Amen. We're going to allow him to close us out. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, no. Here he go. Here he go. Uh, this is for the preacher. Just hold on for a minute. Okay. <laughs> We understand that your wife could not make it to the celebration, but we wanted you to take some flowers home for her and one in there for you. Yes, sir. And thank you all for coming. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Now, Reverend, uh, yes, sir. understand that you got some plans later on outside here, right? We always got plans. All right. Well, we, Amen. We, we, know, we know that uh, one thing you got to do, you got to eat. That's what we're going to do. Okay. <laughs> so we want to start off the evening with you being able to eat. Okay. And so this is for y'all to go eat. Okay. You got okay. It. <laughs> and, then, and then when you get outside, they probably got some other things for you. But we want to make sure you had the food in case you wanted to just take off of it. But I understand you plan to do a dedication outside? Yes. Okay. Yes. We're going to following the benediction of those of us who are here. I don't know how y'all gonna record this, but we're going to dedicate our newly black top and striped parking lot. We're not do a big thing for some other churches, but that's big stuff at this church. The Bible says, despise not the small things. Okay. okay. Pastor, on behalf of the deacons or the deaconesses, we just want to present you with a token of love. And we go to the thank you. Thank you. And, you know, just saying thank you does not <coughs> show or our gratitude for what you've done. Not only for individuals of this church, but for the overall congregation together. Yes, sir. We thank you. And anything that we can do, we know we'll stand up and do it. You've always done that. Uh, then, well, there was one more, but. Other than a pastor, that's right. And I'm grateful for oh. the vision. So I'm going to give this to you. 
thank you for joining Sister Oliver. And Sister um, Oliver, I know you so. They stand up and they preach in my place. Y'all may have to do some more preaching. Get ready. I'm going to go on a call, but y'all get ready. I told y'all I'm going to be me. Me too. In order to be me, I might not be here. <laughs> Praise God. Come on. This a long, this a long Facebook broadcast. Y'all, we still on Facebook? We love you. We thank you for what you sent in our life to make our life change Amen. for the better and serve God. So we love to present you with this. Oh, thank you. And may God continue to bless you and lead you wherever your heart may go. Which is here in the <laughs> May God continue to bless you. Amen. And our family to be as a wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Now that was on behalf of Pastor's Aid. I, I, I'm going to start calling the Pastor's Aid the Arn Curtain. <laughs> they keep secrets. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. You can't make them tell you what's going on. Pastor, this is something that my wife wants to give you. This is now. You take care of it. Uh, what people want to do about that then? Oh, okay. Yes, you, you we'll, know, we'll do that. And Sister Mary, you bless me. I've been missing you. They might have to let you come back and sing some more. Y'all are there. You know, praise to you. They don't want nobody else sing. Praise God. So, once again, thank you. We'll retire after the benediction. Amen. Shall we all stand? Amen. 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 Amen.